So the message today is called Eternity in Our Plans. And for the first verse, we're going to go to Proverbs 13, 12 to 13. Um, so Proverbs chapter 13, verses 12 to 13. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. I'll read it again. So hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. So here we see that you know, the Bible says that hope deferred, which means hope that doesn't happen, makes the heart sick. But on the flip side of that, um, whos whosoever, uh, you know, fears the commandments of God shall be rewarded, which means that that like any any hopes or plans that we have or desires that we have that don't come to pass, um, you know, like it, 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 guarantee, it guarantees hope deferred. Um, which can lead to depression, but but if we actually like live our lives by the word of God, apply the word of God um, in our lives whenever the Holy Spirit leads us to correct something or to change something, and it doesn't mean that like you know our will will always be uh, compatible with the will of God, but whenever it differs from the will of God, God says that if we don't want you know guaranteed. Uh, hope deferred or depression about a situation in the future that the way to avoid that and to and, and to stop those things from happening in our lives is to you know essentially like uh, do a self-assessment and like assess any part of our lives that you know that we're planning things you know and it doesn't um, and and because basically even good plans that have nothing sinful in them um, you know like if it, if it doesn't happen we'll have hope deferred but what God is telling us today is that if we plan with Him, um, applying His Word and His way of doing things to our lives, to our plans, to our desires, um, as we're going to see in a message through more scriptures and um, and more parts of explanation, that by giving our plans to God and you know doing things His way, that we are actually guaranteed a reward. That reward is that by walking in God's ways and precepts and commandments. We will get the things that God promises, which are all the things that that you know um, human beings desire to be happy. The Bible promises like all those things to us. There's no uh, restraint, but we have to do things God's ways and don't plan, you know, just like independent from God for 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 anything. Because because even if it happens, it's outside of God's plan. And anything that happens that we desire outside of God's plan will not be, um, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll either eventually crumble or, you know, we simply will not be fulfilled or satisfied with that because God, his, God is the one um, that satisfies all of our needs and that gives us reward or, or addition to the blessing that he already is in our lives. So essentially... That's what the message that that's what the title God gave me is eternity in our plans, because it's impossible for us to plan with eternity. You know, like like human beings will only plan with like, you know, we plan um, a maximum like you know 50, 70 years. We don't know when we're gonna die, but any plans that 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 we as human beings make, you know, they're 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 like for fifty years, maybe 60, 70 at best. But the plans that God has for us are. Are eternal there's no end to his plans for us because he views the plans he has for us based on an eternal perspective on a on an eternal life not on what we plan for like 50 67 years what he has planned for all of us for all of every human being born is an eternal plan and of course that will only happen if you know to for people who are saved but even at that people who are saved God is saying today that we need to recognize that the plans that he have for us don't just begin after we die and go to heaven that then his eternal plan begins for us knowing the plans he has for us are eternal and he's saying remember the fact that adam and eve were not created to die adam and eve um god had a plan for them for all eternity 
and if sin didn't come into the world, they, they would they would have never died, and it's, they would still be alive today, and still being in God's plan for them. So we have to understand that you know the mindset of like considering eternity in our plans when we die is actually like exactly what Satan wants us to, um, you know, wants us to to think because he wants us blinded to the fact that God has plans for us while we're living, which literally like affect and continue into eternal life when he returns and gives us a glorified body. So basically like God wants to like break that wrong paradigm that we have that like, you know, um, let's just plan for the best life until our retirement and whatnot, because God is like, no, 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 the, you know, you don't get it. Like I want, I have plans for you now. And those plans that I have for you, if you walk in them, they will continue into eternal life. So they don't just stop. And a whole new life and a whole new identity begins. You no, know, like those things that God have have for us, you know, uh, in this life, okay, literally because Jesus said, Jesus said that 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 whosoever whosoever will follow Him shall never see death. That doesn't mean that we don't die physically. That means that following Him doesn't include death in our plans. So following Jesus in our life by by walking in the commandments of God. You know, literally, like we we begin eternal life now, even though we die physically if he, before he returns, um, and you know it doesn't matter. Like we have to understand that like our eternal life begins now. Therefore, we have to apply God's instructions for our lives and follow that purpose now, because our we were born again uh, by faith, saved by faith, born again. So that new birth is is a new birth into an eternal. Um, into an, an, an eternal life so it, it begins now so pretty much this message is to break that paradigm that we have of making plans without god because as christians as children of god sons and daughters of god we are already in our eternal life now in in the sense of like how we should live and how we should follow god's purposes for us because the giftings we have continue you know like people who died and went to heaven like their giftings are still continuing there because the bible says that we were created in christ jesus unto good works so the idea that we're saved and we're just waiting until we die and go to heaven that idea is is it's not biblical and you know i know that it's very prevalent in the church but it's not biblical and we need to to put to, to discard that mindset and put on the mindset as as you know that uh as the word says that our our eternal life with the lord begins now therefore we should make our plans with the lord now um so let's go to the, the second verse to jeremiah 29 verses 11 to 13. jeremiah 29 verses 11 to 13. god god speaking he says for i know the thoughts that i think towards you saith the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and i will hearken unto you and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart so verse 20 verse um so jeremiah 29 verse i believe 11 in the hebrew you know like taking consideration of the hebrew uh, words and putting it together in a more accurate translation says this it says for i know the strategies that i devised for you says the most high plans of complete peace and welfare and not of calamity to give you a prosperous future and hope i'll, I'll repeat that so here's what uh, verse 11 says when you apply the hebrew words to every word it says for I know the strategies that I devised for you, says the Most High, plans of complete peace and welfare and not of calamity to give you a prosperous future and a hope. So right right there, so the plans that God has for us, you know, he literally said, you know, because Jeremiah spoke Hebrew. So what Jeremiah was saying, the Lord speaking through him, is that I know the strategies that I have for you to, you know, to give you um, complete peace and welfare and not calamity. So 
you know, so in other words, for each individual human being, um, God has a special, uh, you know, plan for each individual to get to where God wants them to get to, to not only have a purpose, but to, uh, to, but to also fulfill their destiny. And by destiny, I don't just mean here and you, you fulfill your destiny on earth, you die, go to heaven. No, that our destinies are eternal in, in Christ. So we have to, we have to cast, yeah, I'm not saying to ignore the fact that, that our, we can physically die. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying when it comes to our walk with the Lord, we have to put away the mindset that like, you know, I'm doing stuff for God now. I'll die, then I'll be rewarded and retire in heaven. Like that's completely unbiblical. Our life in heaven, we, we continue to serve the Lord. Um, and and I'll ju just, to, just to prove that for, for, for a second, um, I didn't plan to read this verse, but I'm feeling led to go to uh, Luke 22. One second, Luke twenty-two to show just to show you guys that, that that our ministries on earth, whatever it is, we're not all called to, you know, for the fivefold ministry. But whatever our ministry is on earth, in a church or outside the church, continues in God's kingdom forever. And I'll prove it to you by reading uh, what Jesus told to, to the to the to the apostles. So Luke twenty-two. Beginning at verse 28, he says, Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So the twelve apostles, Jesus told them, okay, like, because you have denied your 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 own life and live the life that I wanted you to live by following me in in, in, in my ministry, he says, therefore you, sh you shall sit at my table in my kingdom, which which is what every believer, uh, like we're waiting for the, the re for the return of Christ to, for the marriage supper of the Lamb. So he was telling them that like, you will be part of the marriage supper of the Lamb. And not just that, you know, but your job in the future, in, in throughout eternity, will be that you'll, you, each one of you will, will sit on, on 12 thrones and you'll be judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So here you see that the 12 disciples, Jesus told them, by the way, you know, when the kingdom of heaven comes to the earth at my second coming, this is what you'll be doing. And your life now following, and, and, it, was, and it was telling them, your life now following me, you know, prepared you for this ministry in the future when heaven comes to earth. So I just, I just went there to, 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 to show you guys that we have to stop thinking that, um, you know, like God doesn't, God doesn't have a plan for me. We're not all called to be pastors where, you know, there's so many different things that, that people are born to do. Um, you know, music, cooking, like so many things. I don't want to go into all the details, but the Bible says about heaven that, that like he, you know, Jesus said, I go and prepare, I go and prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. So in other words, he's saying in heaven, we all have our own house. Why? Because heaven is not this like eternal eternal church service where we just sing forever and work and like worship and pray. For, no, like those things happen in heaven. We go worship at the, at the throne of God, of course, but we all have our own house in heaven. Why? In the same way that we all have our house, we all have our own house now because we have a life you know jesus said if you lose your life um you know for me you will find it for all eternity why because our life here without him is meaningless um you know we've, we've all been through depression and, and and negative feelings by just feeling um you know just feeling bad because you know when we don't when we're not sure like what god wants wants from us but when we discover what god what God's plans are for us, life becomes life becomes you know interesting. It doesn't mean that we don't have uh, troubles here and there. Jesus said, "In this world, we will have tribulation, but essentially, we're being prepared for an eternal life in His kingdom." So we need to understand that we need to like we need to plan. We need to like all of our plans need to be uh, with the counsel of the Holy Spirit, um, tested with the Word of God, because we're not just living a life. To say I'm a Christian and I'm just wanting to die to go to heaven, 
and to float on clouds because that's that's not what's going on when in heaven people still have jobs just like we saw that 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 the 12 disciples we saw what their job is in heaven and even um yeah, anyways like I'm, I'm i don't want to spend too much time here but essentially god wants us to understand that we have to renew our minds when it comes to like you know but but the plans that we make for our lives because god our, our eternal life begins now and what we do for god now continues into what we do throughout eternity with him we're not just you know like we all have something to do for all eternity so I'll read that again quickly. So, for I know the strategies that I, that, I, that I devised for you, says the Most High, plans of complete peace and welfare and not of calamity to give you a prosperous future and a hope. So, that means that if we seek God with all of our hearts, you know, which we're going to see in a second what that means, but we, if we seek God with all of our hearts, then God will literally give us those like those those little those little nudges that God gives us every day, like do this or do that. It may seem insignificant, but as the years go by, uh, you know, and us following those daily instructions of God, those are all like tiny steps which over years bring us into, you know, like a huge distance from you know all those tiny things God says do this today, do that today, like all those things. If we if we actually do them. As, it, as time goes by, we're literally, we're literally being taken by God, you know, like in, in, in spiritual kilometers, <laughs> so, you know, just, just, just as a matter of speaking. But basically, like, that's what God is doing. Like, God has strategies for our welfare and prosperous future, not just in our life here, but for all eternity. And when I say prosperous, I don't mean money. Like, like, like what I mean is, um, you know, the fruits of the Spirit. Um, primarily, which is like, you know, righteousness, peace, joy, um, you know, patience, long-suffering, all those things, but also uh, tangible blessings, you know, um, of things in our lives, answered prayers, all those things. But we need to understand that our life, like, like we were, the Bible says that we were bought by the blood of Jesus, so, and that we don't belong to, our, to ourselves anymore. So that means that we can't afford, if we don't belong to ourselves, then we were purchased, we're all on our way to hell, and we're purchased by Jesus, by his shed blood on the cross, so that we can, uh, you know, have a life in his kingdom instead, which we should be thankful about that. But also, Jesus said, you know, um, the commandments of God are not grievous. So if we actually uh, apply these things of the word of God in our lives, he, he, he told us, like, they're not grievous. But in the contrary... They actually, they actually like step by step over time will give make us more more and more blessed no matter what's happening outside in the world it doesn't matter the bible says we are in we are we are in in the world but we're not we're not of the world so even though we're here we don't have to have all the same um you know things affecting us internally that's affecting the world we can be in the world impact the world through god but but like I, you know, my life is a testimony to the fact that, like, you know, I don't feel, you know, like, like even in this COVID thing, like, I don't feel depressed at all. I feel good because every day I'm, I'm, I'm following, I'm following Christ, His instructions for my life. So because I do that every day, like, I can not only feel the joy, of, the, the joy of God in my heart, which is not based on what I do, but it's His, His own joy in my heart, which keeps increasing. And, 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 and that's what we have to do no matter what's happening uh, in the world. We should, because, you know, just because things are tough in the world doesn't mean to, because they're tough, you know, to stop listening to God and to do our own plans. No, it's even more <laughs> a reason to, to, to listen to God to, to make sure that we have the right strategies, okay, to not only survive, but to thrive through what's going on. So God, God's plans for us are literally strategies. In other words, my life is not the same as, as you, you, your guys' lives. That means, like, I need to I need to, to, to seek God. Yeah, I know to go to church. I know to pray. I know all that. But I need my personal strategy book from the Holy Spirit to have a blessed and future, to have a blessed life and, 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 and everything. So we all individually need our special strategy book from the Holy Spirit to get to where he wants us individually to get because we know... To pray we know to worship we know to read the bible instead of the bible you know we know all those things and and so we're all supposed to do that 
but there there are some special strategies that that God has for us that can only work for us because that's part of His plan for us, and that's what God wants to, wants us to understand today. Like we need to stop planning on our own and start seeking God for all of our plans, and um, yeah, and and the Bible says that that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So even when we seek for for God's instructions for something we we we, we you know we want to get to or desire. Um, we have to wait until the until the sometimes it doesn't come right away. Sometimes we have to pray for days, sometimes weeks, and then and then bam, he gives us the, the instruction. And as we apply it, like you know, it's like the it's like the water is parting, and we're just like 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 walking because it's God's because God is leading us. So the scripture that says, um, "Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, um, and they shall soar on eagles' wings." Basically, it's telling us that. If we wait upon the Lord, even as we see, you know, that the Lord is not answering right away for our strategy or instruction or plan, even in that waiting, we actually get peace. We actually get strength. Um, you know, like like we actually like we're actually getting blessed just by waiting for God's instruction. So don't take waiting and God not answering right away as like oh, like you know, what what should I do? No, the Bible says those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So waiting upon the Lord is, is 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 necessary because one of the characters that God wants to mold in all of us is patience, because He Himself is patient. Can you imagine if every time we pray to God for anything, we just get the answer right away? Like I pray for this, bam! I pray for this, bam! Like, <laughs> what what would be the purpose of living? It's just praying for stuff and they come right away. Like it, it would take away, like it it become meaningless. So part part of the part of the joy of following God is to learn to wait upon the Lord. Um, you know, and that waiting upon the Lord, if, we, if we're generally waiting on, one, on, on, a, on a direction from God, he'll give us peace and he'll strengthen us while we wait. So don't, don't, when you pray to God for something, don't take silence or not an immediate answer as, as a cause to like, to panic and have stress. No, understand that's part of how God works with us because God doesn't just want, want to answer our prayers. God wants to mold us in his image. And part of that is patience. I mean, God lives forever. Uh, you know, like you, you need to be patient because from God's perspective, God is not in a, in a hurry for anything. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that, that for God, one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So because God, like God's perspective is that, you know, he has all eternity. So we need to understand and, 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 and appreciate that God wants us not to just get things, but to enjoy the process of, of, of walking with him. So verse, let's read verse 12 to 13. So it says, Then ye shall call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. I'll read it again. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. So the word for heart in Hebrew is the, the word labab, and it literally means um, the mind, the, sorry, the mind of the will. So this is what God is really saying. When, when, the, when the Bible in, in the Old Covenant says your heart, God's talking about your mind or your will. And also it says, then shall you call upon me and you shall go and, and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and you shall seek me and find me when you, sh when you shall search for me with all your mind, or when you shall search for me with all your will. So God says that when we when we pray and search for him with all of our heart, which means our mind, so when we pray to God and search him with all of our mind and all of our will, we shall find him. And so that means this. That means, it doesn't just mean to pray and try to think in a special with our mind. It means when we pray to God, it should be from it should be from a life that actually cares about what God like what what is God's opinion on every area of my thoughts. So I'll, I'll just give you an example. You know, like, um, you know, is my humor pleasing to God? You know what I mean? Like, like sarcasm, whatever. Like, you know, the like would Jesus be sarcastic in his humor? So, so we have to think, like, like I'm, I'm not saying every single thought has to. We have to think about Jesus. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that. That God, that that when God sees that in our minds, we actually care to, to 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 desire His will, to desire like you know like what is God's will in, 
you know, in, 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 in the way that I think, the way that I joke, the way that I like, you know, my, 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 my worldview is my worldview compatible with the Bible or is my worldview against the Bible? You know, for, for, for example, the, 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 the Bible talks about the fact that like, you know, all liars and all fornicators will have their part in the lake of fire. So is my worldview in agreement with, with, with sex before marriage? Like, you know, so that's what it means. Like is God says that when we pray, when we pray and seek for him with all of our heart, which means all of our mind, which will find him. That means we can't just have this like totally anti-God worldview. And then, and then think that when we pray, God will give us all these, you know, amazing plans and like how to get things done. No, like we, we have to surrender to God and, and to God's worldview. Like we have to, you know, that's what it means. Seek with me with all of your mind and all of your will and you shall find me. It, you know, it doesn't mean we know everything that God wants in the Bible. If we don't know the, the whole Bible yet, that's not what it means. It just means whatever we know of the Bible that, you know, if we know we disagree with it, then we like we have to simply allow the allow the Bible to reform us to what you know to <laughs> to God's thinking about things. So that's what it means. So when we do that, when we agree with God, not because we feel that like oh, these are new times, you know, like new new way of doing things, like that mindset, God will be shut off to it because how can, how can God guide us to His eternal plans for our lives when in our in our worldview we're against. <laughs> We're totally against you know his ways so it doesn't work like that we have to repent where wherever we are because it, like it is rebellion like it it essentially is rebellion because when lucifer rebelled against god lucifer was saying you know i want to do things my way so we have to understand that that kind of thinking comes from the devil himself so we can't think like the devil and then ex expect for god to give us all these amazing plans and for our lives like we we need to repent wherever we, we, we've been doing that and understand that like that's the first step to truly be like for God to see, okay, now you're ready for me to give you my strategies to make, you know, that it will not fail. Your life will like will prosper. But the first step is to actually be on the same, you know, in, in one mind with God. Like we can't be um, that opposed with, with God mentally and then, and, and then he'll give us plans. It doesn't work like that. We have to first repent of what we know we're against God and that's when God will easily be found easily <clears throat> and by found I mean his voice will, will be like very easily heard because if we're thinking stuff because like the 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 frequency that God speaks to us like the Holy Spirit like he doesn't God can speak to, to people audibly it happened in the Bible over the Bible but but usually when God speaks to me and other people have asked him, they confirmed it. The, like the voice of God, like, okay, if, if we, if we are, if we are a radio, this is an example, if we are a radio, God's channel would be the same channel that our own thoughts are, are on. So when we think to ourselves, we can, we can hear ourselves. We can hear our thoughts. They're not audible, but we can actually hear ourselves think and it's not audible. So the voice of God is in that, on that exact same channel, but we know it was somebody else who spoke. So, that's the, that's the channel that's that's li literally the spiritual channel of god's voice so that means if if in our minds we're all against god in our world of you and everything then that so when god speaks we won't recognize god we'll just think that like oh this is like i don't like this thought right here so we won't even recognize it. it's god speaking to us and we'll and we'll re and we'll keep rejecting and rejecting what he's saying just because we don't agree with it when but the whole time is we know it's biblical but we, we refuse to accept it so that's the best way to, 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 to miss what God is saying all the time, because God will not change his view because of our views. You know, we have to change our views to begin to recognize when God is speaking. So that's why this is very important to, to have to see God with all of our heart, which means all of our mind and wherever, and also it means all of our will, which means, you know, till this day, there's some things I want to do sometimes that, that God tells me to do something else. So, but whenever that happens, I have to humble myself and, and sacrifice my will for God's will. I mean, like that, that's the way it has to go. So, so that's for everybody, you know? So in other words, God is saying that we will activate his strategies to bless our lives when we do his will, even if it means sacrificing our own will. So, 
Let's go to Psalm uh, chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. So it says, uh, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So again, God is saying, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. What, like, what, who are the ungodly? The ungodly are those who disagree with the Bible. You know, the, like, you know, an ungodly person can, can even seem to us like a very nice person. It doesn't matter. God, God didn't say, um, you have to be nice to, to go to heaven. He said, you have to do his will to go to heaven. So even like, in, in, like we, we usually think an ungodly person that's like you know like a murderer or a very rude person no there, there's a lot of very nice people that are ungodly <laughs> but they're very nice you know what i mean but they're still on, on their way to hell because they reject god so so we have to understand god is saying blessed is the man or the woman of course blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly it doesn't matter how nice they are if their if their counsel is is unbiblical we shouldn't we shouldn't apply it uh, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So basically, and then it says verse 3. Well, before I read that, it says that, number one, we'll only be blessed if we don't apply the counsel of, of the ungodly. Number two, um, we're going to be blessed if we don't stand in a way of sinners, which means don't 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 participate in ungodliness. Number three, we will be blessed if we do not sit in the seat of the scornful. So scornful, essentially, like you know, it's it's um like anyways, like we all know what 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 scorning is. You know, like it's just just like sitting down and and just like bashing other people and and whatnot. So God says, you know, that's not acceptable if we want a blessed life. You know what I mean, like. Um, yeah, the Bible says have righteous judgment. So righteous judgment is different than just like backbiting and bashing people. Like righteous, ju righteous judgment is, is saying, okay, like what that person did was not right because of X, Y, Z, which is biblical. Let's pray for that person. But just sitting down and like bashing a person endlessly, like, you know, <laughs> just for fun and as a way, no, like that, that's not acceptable. So right, right, right away here, God is saying those three things have to have to be have to be out of our lives if we want to actually sustain blessing in our life so I'll, I'll read it again so blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful but but his delight is in the law of the lord so the word of god which means you know like what is god's opinion like what does god say i should do in this situation but his delight but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night so you know that person reads reads the Bible like in the morning and at night, you know, just to like you know remind him him or herself the Word of God and because you know we we need to be reminded what God says. That's why we that's why we have to, we have to read the Bible every day, um, you know, at least twice a day. And and this is the result of that. So of eliminating those those uh, three things that that block God's blessings, and also reading reading God's Word every morning and every night. So we can apply what we read, and this is what this is the, this is the result of that. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So God is saying that if we do those things, we will be like a tree uh, planted by the rivers of water. And number one, Jesus said, "You know a tree by its fruit." So. You know, and it says a bad tree is cut down because it has no fruit. So a bad tree is cut, cut down and burned in the fire. And that parable referred to, to the future end of the ungodly. So is it worth it to just laugh with the ungodly and scorners and like agree with their worldviews? That are, no, it, it's not worth it if the end, if, if, if that will just make us like dry trees with, without no water, who don't bear fruit, branches are cracking, all dry and depressed. It's not worth it. And and even though the, and already we're depressed, it's not worth it. And then when Christ returns, then we then we're thrown into the into the fire. Like it's really not worth it. But but the, but here's the opposite of it. 
yeah, the world may call you narrow-minded, and it, but like that, if the world calls you, if you're a Christian and the world calls you narrow-minded, you should say thank you because I'm not saying to be arrogant. I'm just saying like you should. It's a good sign because Jesus said, "Narrow is the way." Okay, so so straight straight is the way, and narrow is the road that leads to eternal life. So if as a Christian, because you because you obey God, and then people call you oh, man like you're so narrow minded, that should be a sign to you that you're actually do, doing the right thing, because Jesus said that the road to eternal life is narrow and straight. So don't don't fall for the traps of, of the devil. Oh, I'm, I'm narrow minded. Sorry, like I should be more accepting of uh, you know what's politically correct and what. Like I'm not saying to be rude and to insult people. What I'm saying is that if the world says that your views are narrow minded and old and whatever, it should be a sign to you that you you that you are in God's will because this world, <laughs> Jesus said, if they hated me, they're gonna hate you. Okay, so if this world doesn't agree with you, don't take it as like, oh my God, I should maybe be more like, you know, like less, like more wide minded, like, no, you know, love, love, the Bible says love your enemies. So I'm not saying to be rude to anybody. I'm just saying that's a sign that you are in God's will. Don't let that make you, make you, don't let that make you fall in the trap of the devil to like make you, okay, maybe I should change a bit. No, don't change. Keep following the word of God. So, <clears throat> yeah, so, but this delight is in the law of the Lord, and, is, and in his law that he made it day and night, and it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. So not, not only are you going to be well watered, not depressed, but with the peace of God, and joyful, but every season you're going to bring forth your fruit, which means your prayers will be answered every season. So every season there'll be, there'll be, a, new, there'll, there'll be a new bunch of prayers being answered every year. So, so, so each trees, trees bring like uh, fruit trees, bring fruit once a year every season. So that means that every year, you know, something new will happen to your life. Your, your every maybe not every single prayer will be answered every year, but every year something will be answered. Every year you'll be encouraged because something new has been answered. You know, like that's that that's how my life has been for years and years, and that's how anybody's life can be. So. And you just have to sacrifice those things, which God said in Psalm one to sacrifice. It's not, it's not worth it to just be around the wicked and be depressed with them when the whole time, you know, you can just like okay, be maybe have a bit less friends, but at least be happy in life. It, it, you know, so the, the choice is ours. We have free will, but God is saying, you know, plan like let your plans be with God. Plan for eternity. Don't plan to just fit in and 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 and. You know, be sad. Just plan to. You, you may you may stand out. The Bible says that nobody lights a candle and put it under, un, under a bushel, but but under a candlestick. So, everyone walks back into the light. So when you follow the when you follow Jesus, you, <laughs> you're gonna stand out. Okay, but the, but that that's a good thing. At least people can see your, you know that your life, you know, it's the right example and and it's blessed. And even if even if even if they don't agree, at least by just by obeying God, like you're you're witnessing to people without even seeing anything. So so just your life will be a, a, a witness to them. So um and that in itself has a reward, you know? So but that's another message. But the point is that we need to understand that to be you know just read someone again in your own time and read it once a day if you you know maybe for a week just to realize you know the things the things that, that have to be out of your life. And the things in your life to actually like bring blessing and stay in the blessing. So because sometimes pe people don't know why things don't like you know really work in our lives. Someone is the reason why. Like just read that again for a week. It's a very short psalm, only six verses. Read it like one every day for for for, for one week. I recommend, and you're gonna just realize how easy it is to enter the the blessing zone. So the blessing of God is literally within the zone. Like you have to stay in that zone. Okay, to, 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 to just maintain the blessing. And, and it's, uh, I'm telling you, it's not hard to do and it's worth it. So, and also, God told me, like you said, living this way, you know, uh, with God's strategies for our lives, 
it eliminates the need for controlling people to get what we want or manipulation. Um, because those things only abort God's promises through doubting and taking things into our own hands. So when you live by God's word and you're patient um, and, 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 and you apply what God said to do in your life personally every day, um, and it's not hard to do just in the morning after, after you read the Bible and pray, just ask God, you know, what are your instructions for me today? And whatever he says, do it that day and do that every day. And like that, that's simply, that's, that's all, it's not hard. That's all you have to do. And those things you do every day, that's what's moving things strategically to bless your life and answer your prayers. It's not us trying to make people do things and like make, trying to make that work. Those things guarantee that God will be, okay, well, they're still trying to do their own thing. So I'm going to just watch and when they're going to come, when, I, when they're going to be like sad enough and cry enough to come to me, then I'm going to help them again. Because you have to understand God respects free will. So if we try to make things happen all the time, God can't, can't help us. But if we let God do what he said, like if we apply God's instructions daily, that's how we let God move and like, you know, influence people and and like that's you know god can god god can give somebody one dream or a vision that makes them do something that he wants for your life like all all we have to do is to apply god's instructions so god says that eliminates the need for manipulation and controlling people because all you have to do is is apply god's strategy for your life every day and that in itself works your prayers and it works for you by doing that god is working for you the angels are released because you're doing that so so it it so like that's why i'm i'm like that alone is is why i've i've i don't have stress in my life because i i literally let god do things like i i say what what today should i do the lord i do it and then like i know god is moving i don't need to like, try to make people do stuff and it is it's totally uh it, it's not 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 only is it not not only it eliminates the need to do that but doing those things is a sin to God anyway. The Bible says that that uh, we can't have we can't have guile. Guile is is manipulation. So we we can't do that. We, like like you know if like that has to die from our lives as a as a condition as a prerequisite for God to truly move mightily. So so if we want God to move mightily, not just like a drop here, a drop there, we have to understand that okay, like all this control and trying to do things, I gotta let it go. And all I got to do is, is to daily do my special instructions from God that day. And that's how things work, you know, like it, it's, it's that simple. So let's go to Luke 8, 15. So Luke 8, 15 says, But that on a good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. I'll read it again. But that on a good ground are they which in an honest and good heart have heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So in other words, we know that the Bible, well, in case we don't, Anybody doesn't know, but the Bible uh, is called uh, in this particular parable. The Bible, the Word of God, is seed, and and our and our heart is the ground. And and He says, "But that on a good ground are they which in a honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience." In other words, it takes it takes knowing what God is saying to do, put it in our heart or in our mind, which means applying it. Um, and by doing, by simply applying what God says, what we're here to do, God is working for us and the fruit of what he wants for our lives will come, um, you know, with patience. So we have to apply what he says and be patient. So daily, he like read the word, listen to God, apply, apply to the best of your ability. You know, whenever you fail, just repent and keep pressing on. Um, but that's the way to live. That's the way to, you know, to guarantee blessing in life. And that's the, and that's the way to live, you know, our life with Christ, which will continue in eternity in a job he'll give us throughout eternity. So this life is, it, this life is the, the training ground for our eternal job, because 
you know, in 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 the, in the eternal you know in the eternal kingdom of heaven, which is coming to the earth at its return, uh, all of us who are saved will have an eternal position in there. It's a real life. That's why it's coming here to the earth. It's a real life. So it begins here, and that's the way we that's the way it starts. And it and we bring forth fruit with patience when we apply what we hear daily. And the most important instruction of God is to seek first the kingdom of heaven and his moral standard, and he will grant us what we desire. And let's go quickly to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. And verse 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. So in other words, every desire that we have in our heart that, that is not sinful, God actually desires to give us that desire, but we have to sacrifice our worldview for his worldview. We have to sacrifice our will whenever it conflicts with his will, and we have to daily apply his instructions. And that's that's and 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 give up control and, man, and manipulation, and and replace it with a daily ob obedience of what he told us to do for that particular day in our personal life. Um, that's that's essentially how how we do that. And he says, if we live like that, every desire that is not hard that that is not sinful, he he will he will grant it to us in due time, as long as we're patient. And every year something will happen. Every year, you know. The Bible, the Bible's examples and parables are, you know, God means what He says. If He says every season, we know that 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 every se that a season like spring, summer, fall, or winter, we know seasons come every year. It, it takes every, it takes a year for a new. Well, you know, it, it takes a, it, it takes about a few months for a season to change, but God says that by applying His instructions, every season, so every year, something beautiful will happen in our lives but basically it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that before that nothing will happen yes things will happen but what it means about the the the, the parable of the fruit uh, of the tree bearing fruit is that every year you, like you will get everything god wants for you every year so and 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 that and that that alone um you know that alone makes life very enjoyable so for the last verse, the last verse, let's go to Proverbs 19, 20 to 21. Proverbs 19, 20 to 21. So Proverbs 19, 20 to 21 says, Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in that other end. There are many devices in a man's heart, nevertheless the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. So he says, hear counsel, okay, the counsel of the Bible, the counsel of the Holy Spirit, the counsel of like other Christians. So it says, hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in the latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. So God is saying that there's many plans in our hearts, but only his counsel for those plans will actually work and, you know, and not give us hope deferred. So hope deferred is when our plans don't work. And the Bible says whenever a plan we have doesn't work, uh, we, we get hope deferred, which is like deep sadness and, you know, like we just feel bad. We're like, why, why, why is this happening to me? So God is saying, if if we want to end this hope deferred streak that we have, we have to start doing things His way. So, so that's the message. You know, eternity in our plans. So we need to plan in every area of our life, everything we desire. We need to, we need to see God's plan and personal strategy for that for that particular thing for our lives. Apply what he says and be patient.